So the first grade is like, you know, we kind of do it fun, but obviously you don't want to, you don't want to tell people that you're doing this, right? <laughs> I use animals as a, as a, as a, as a kind of a mascot for each one, right? A mascot for each one, right? So if it's a low power, low interest animal, what would you call? It? What would that be? A sloth. Huh? A sloth, yes. Anybody else? Low power, low interest animal? Snail. Okay. Right? Okay, so you can come up with your own, your own that one, right? But what we do here is we use a little, funny little teddy bear here, right? Okay. Now these are your low power, low interest. They are masses most of the time, right? People who are affected but not so affected. They are not that interested, right? They will do whatever they want. But you want to monitor this group of people. Because this group of people may one day get promoted, right? One day may come with a lot of money, okay? Right? One day may come with a lot of knowledge. So you want to monitor these people, right? Where they are going. But for now, you want to keep them at bay because these are the, these are the majority of people. Okay? The second group of people, okay? Second group of people over there, okay? Right? Are your high interest and your low power, okay? Who who what what, what would you use? High interest. A high interest, highly interested person would do what? Yeah, maybe do a lot of activity, right? Talk a lot about it, okay? Right? So this we call them our, our monkeys, right? Why monkeys? Monkeys chatter a lot. <coughs> so if you don't, don't control these people, right? They will chatter the wrong things. They will say the wrong things. If you don't communicate with them, that's why we should this, keep them informed. If you don't keep your evangelists informed, what happens? Somebody else says, hey, you know what? What we know is doing, what Joe is doing is not very nice. In fact, your product may be very great, but then somebody is giving bad views about it, right? So you must make sure you keep this group informed because they are the ones that will evangelize. Like, you know, a bunch of monkeys get together in a chapter, it's very loud, right? Very, very loud, right? So everybody can hear what's happening, right? So these are probably your evangelists. So make sure you don't, don't neglect them. Make sure you're communicating with them. Make sure you're telling them the features. Make sure you're telling them what the benefits are so that they go out and do the same thing, okay? They go out and do the same thing. Um, the third one, high power and... Um, Low interest, or maybe no interest, or interest in something else. What kind of person would that be? Yeah, what kind of animal? Right? <laughs> I think you identify with this one. An Asian, Asian crowd identifies this. Ah, I thought so. <laughs> I thought so, right? Yeah, you didn't say it, right? Yeah. So these are the snakes, right? So your snakes are the ones you keep satisfied, right? And, and um, I don't know how many of you, uh, I think a lot of you have been in corporate life before. How many snakes have you faced in corporate life? <laughs> Plenty. Plenty, right? Double-headed ones. Huh? Double-headed ones. Double ones also, right? Yeah. They come out heads. yeah, I know. I know there's, there's, a, there's a video that's going viral on Facebook right now, right? The little iguana running away from a bunch of snakes and he escapes, right? He's being attacked all over the place, you know? So it's just like that. And sometimes corporate life is like that. You are trying to run something and all these snakes are coming against you. So, so it's important to think about it. Now, I have some personal stories, right? Back, back when I was in corporate life as well, I was running a regional project, right, for all of Asia. We were centralizing our operations in Singapore. And it was going quite okay. I mean, but there were a lot of people who resist. Remember, change is hard for people. You know, science has shown that change is very hard, okay, because people are set in their mindset. Um, so people will resist, okay? But I had a new stakeholder come in midway through the project, and he was my the next level, my boss's level. And when he came in, and he was a new guy, came in from another company, and he saw his project, and I didn't involve him a lot. I just kept him on side because I said, look, he doesn't know anything, so why, why do I want to manage him? So this was my mistake. I should have managed him from the beginning. He started getting in my way. Right? Started saying bad things about the project, telling my boss's boss different things. Right? Started randomizing me, right? Because he's, again, my one senior level, right? So he asked me for reports, you know. He started randomizing me the lot. And he was just giving me so much. And every time in a meeting, he would be the, you know, the biggest naysayer. So I said, what's wrong with this guy, right? Well, he doesn't know anything. He doesn't want to contribute anything, but he still wants to, to get involved. So I had a chat with my boss. And my boss says, you know, you watch out for this guy. Right? We don't know much about him. So make sure you keep him satisfied. So I started to understand what he wanted. So the only thing, after a few sessions with him, I understood he wanted a limelight. So what I would do is, any high level meeting that I have to attend, I would bring my contingent, right? So this is here, I would invite him. I would go and say, can you please join us and, and give your support? 
because I need to you know, get approval from the GM from the operation center. So would you like to say, yeah, who's going to be there? So I said, yeah, there'll be a GM, there'll be a direct senior director. So, yeah, yeah, I'll definitely be there. And he'll come into the room, he'll walk into the room and he'll say, hey, Sanjay, tell me who these people are. So I point, point, point. And he'll go and plop himself down next to the highest ranking guy. Right? And then introduce himself and get, get going. Then all the criticism he did there, when I'm presenting, and I ask him, can you interject some of the issues we are working on? He said, no, 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 we don't have any issues in front of the customer, in front of the, the, the other stakeholder. We don't have any issues. I think we are doing fine and everything's okay. So total different behavior in front of them, in front of them. So I realized, okay, how do I keep him satisfied? I need to keep him as part of my team, whether I like it or not. Okay? So he was part of the team. He was part of the leadership team. But he didn't do, hardly did anything. I kept saying him satisfied. Call him for meetings, call him for that. So I tried to test him also and said, you know, we're going to have a project war room meeting uh, and I want you to come in and give your, give your uh, suggestions and things. And he's like, how long is it going to be? I said, yeah, it's brainstorming. So we meet, meet me around for two hours. Okay? So he says, who's coming there? That was a big question for me. I said, well, nobody. I'm the highest ranking uh, manager in, in the room. So he said, hey, Sanjay, you're doing a good job. Uh, you know, I don't think you need anything from me. So I'll sit this one out. Okay? So then I realized this guy only wants to be in part of the other, other meeting. A second stakeholder was the GM for the operation center. Every time, twice I went in to present my plan. Twice I got thrown out. Right? And I just couldn't. He would find some fault. I'll fix it. I'll go back. He'll find some fault. Because I realized that he didn't want to do anything. He didn't want to take, take over the, the whole thing. So I was struggling with that whole thing. Okay? So he's another snake, right? He doesn't want, he's not interested, and he's just pushing me back. But he pushed me back out twice, and I said the third time I cannot have that happen. But I, I didn't have a, a good way of doing things. So that will set way into the, the next, next quadrant there, and I'll tell you the story about how that got solved. Okay, who is the last animal in High power, low in, uh, high interest. So it's our tiger, right? So your tigers you manage closely. Find all the tigers you have. Because the tigers are very, very useful to your project. Okay? So who was my tiger in the project? It was my boss. Okay? But my boss wasn't that strong a tiger. Because we still got thrown out by the GM twice. And then he used to report to the GM many years ago. So I said, use your influence lah. You know? Use your influence, try to convince him. He couldn't. Okay? But halfway through that, that project, this project lasted almost three years, right? Uh, halfway through the project, my boss left, resigned. So I was left rudderless, like struggling in the, in the waves for a long time, trying to get things done. So one day, out of the blue, I think luck, luck, luck stroke uh, came. My, my boss's boss, vice senior vice president, came back from the US and he was chewed up by his boss. And he called an emergency meeting and he says, I have to solve this problem in compliance, in finance, and all that stuff. What are we doing? Everybody comes up, gives up some, some suggestions, and I say, hey, uh, let everyone say their piece first. So everyone finished their piece and I said, uh, can I share with you a, a project that I'm working on? Then he said, yeah, sure. So I bring out my slides and show him the project. Then he says, hey, it looks like this is a good project. You know, uh, I think you will help us to solve the problem. But I noticed your timeline, you, you, you are so far behind. What's happening? So I said, I have a lot of resistance because I'm having this problem. So he said, what kind of problem? So I told him about the GM and Op Center. Op Center is not willing to take on the thing. And he says, but the, the problems we see is minor. Why does he stop? I said, twice I presented, twice I've been thrown out. So he said, okay, um, do me one favor. Can you send me on the slides? I will go and talk to him. Then I said, why are you going to talk to him? He said, you leave that to me. I'm going to check with him. And what he did was, the following week, he said, I'm going to have dinner with him every day. He went and had dinner with him. He came back the next day. And he told me, okay, go schedule a five person with him. Then I said, but he's going to do the same thing. He said, he won. Trust me, you won. So I went in there and brought, brought my snake along also. Uh, because the snake must be there. <laughs> so the, the snake, uh, is the, he, he was the VP for sales, he needed to be there. So I brought him along also. And we walked in there, the next stakeholder, GM, walks in the room smiling. Normally he has a scowl, like right? so very scowling, never shakes anybody's hands. That day he walked in, he saw me, he smiled at me, and he came and shook his hand. That was when I freaked out totally. I said, what he is. Why is he behaving like this? So throughout the presentation, he's nodding, his head, he's smiling, which was very different. And I didn't fix any great thing after the second presentation, right? And he said, yes, yes, this is a good project. We are going to, we need to go ahead with it because it is in line with what the corporate wants. 
right? And he want to do that. Okay. He turns around to his team and says, you know, this is a very important project. I want you to give 100 percent support to Sunday to make sure it's successful. And I go, what happened here? Right? And they walked out. In fact, the team was asking after that, what did you do to my boss? I said, I didn't do anything. Okay. I don't know who, who did what, but I just kept it away. So so how important tigers are, because at, 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 at your level, you probably cannot influence higher up very hard. You need to have the tigers to influence those things, right, to do that. Okay. So similarly, I had more resistance from the subsidiaries, and this guy became a tiger because he was so interested in the project after that. He said, give me an update, okay? Let's have a five-minute session, let's have a coffee. So he was like, where are you, where are you stuck? What's happening with you? I said, well, this, this thing's happening, man, I'm stuck here. So I told him I'm stuck with the subsidiaries. China is not cooperating, India is not cooperating, and a few people are not cooperating. They are coming back with all issues. He said, okay, leave that to me, I will settle that. So wherever I had resistance, he went and settled it. Like dominoes started to fall. I was like struggling with it, but dominoes started to fall. And when those dominoes fell, right, everything was there. Then he went into phase one, we had a very successful phase one. Okay. So after that, I became such a believer of stakeholder management, understanding who the stakeholder or who can influence it. So these are, these are some of my, my, my actual, actual uh, issues that I faced. Okay. So that's why we call this a tiger map. Okay. We call this a tiger map. Who are the tigers? Understand your tigers okay. and utilize them to, to the best of your ability. No. Now remember one thing, right? Remember you have lost stakeholders, there's always going to be conflict among the stakeholders. Right? Different stakeholders will want different things. And you may have all the stakeholders, your customers, your vendors, your VCs, right? your team members also, your team members are stakeholders, right? The people in your vendors, your contractors you hire, they're all your stakeholders. How can they delay your project? But the most important thing is they will have some conflict. These are just as some examples. Some people may be concerned about quality of the product. Some people may be concerned about how much money you're spending. Some people may be concerned about how fast you're going to do things. Right? Or other things, right? Other, other things, what kind of features the product is going to have. Right? So you have all this conflict and all this conflict needs to be managed. So you need to understand that why you how to manage those conflicts between the different stakeholders. Who are your tigers? Right? Right? Your tigers, of course, you want to make sure your tigers are pushing for you and, and helping you. So work with your tigers as far as you can. Okay? Now, when you come to stakeholders again, you will always have your supporters, you always have your resistors, but you also have the middle part, the, 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 the neutrals. And you also have the die hard, the die hard resistors who you do whatever you do, they will, they will still not change. Then you have the early adopters. Right? These people are the ones that push you. So in, in your case, you need to understand who these people are. Use your early adopters right, well. Use your supporters well. But never neglect the middle. Because the middle is like a bell curve, you know. It's like a bell curve. Your neutrals are probably the highest number. Okay? Right? So today, as you can see, the US election, the neutrals are going to flip me the side. The die hearts are never going to change. Right? The Republicans are Republicans, Democrats. But those, who, those the, the swing states, those who change every every election, right? These are the people. So, what is your strategy for that? Okay, think about your strategy for that. Because if you don't move your neutrals over to this side, they will go over to that side. They will eventually go over to that side. So, managing your neutrals is a key thing, right? So, what do you do? These are just, just some strategies to think about. Okay, communication, finding common interests, right? But make sure that uh, they don't assume that they will always follow, right? Okay, make sure you communicate to them. These are your monkeys. Make sure you communicate to them. Because if you don't communicate to them, they will just follow whoever talks about it. Okay. Right? So these are just some, some things that we do. Right? Now for opponents, obviously, don't ignore them. Don't dismiss them completely. Okay? Because sometimes you'll find that they may oppose one part of your venture, but they're not totally opposed to your whole venture. Right? So manage them. Work with them. Because we always assume that oh, it's opposed to this part of it and it's opposed to everything. And most of the time it's not. They just want that part to be fixed. Right? So think about some of these things. Right? Acknowledge if there are problems, acknowledge them. Right? There are problems, right? But that's what we are here for. We want to solve them. And get them to talk about their opinions. Right? Of course, your supporters don't neglect them also. Right? Because the supporters are the ones. Make sure they're involved. Empower them. Get them involved. Give them roles and ownership. Yeah, work with them. Right? Don't dismiss them. Okay? But also don't think they will lead the effort for you. You will have to lead the effort yourself. They will just be your strong supporters, right? But you have to manage them. Okay. These are just some tips of do's and don'ts when it comes to um, stakeholder and strategy. So all thing we do is we come up with a stakeholder plan, right? How to manage them. 
right? So we, we kind of look at, look at a, what we call a stakeholder management register, and we look at that and say, what's the stakeholder? Why is he interested in my venture? And what's his possible negative or positive effect on the venture that we're doing, right? Okay, how can he help my venture? How can he derail my venture, right? And then think about management strategies, right? How are you going to manage them? Communicate with them regularly, um, have meetings with them, town hall, what do you need to do, right? How often do you need to do these sort of things? Right? Understand the frequency, understand how you're going to communicate, right? So I'm not going to go into communications planning, but how you communicate to them? Through email, face-to-face, -face, what do you need to do, right? Like my tiger, for instance, I have a face-to-face -face meeting with him every week. If he's traveling, it's a phone call. There's no email there, we won't do email. Because I know he has no time to read email. But he's, he's very quick, he needs, he needs, he needs a two-minute elevator pitch from me. He says, hey, walk me down and tell me what's happening with the project. And in two minutes, I have to tell him, get a decision from him and walk back up, right? So he, at that level, you know, finance will want a lot of numbers and all that stuff. So what you give them, right? Think about it, right? So what are the strategies? How you communicate to them? What medium you use? I think that's all very important, okay? That's how, that's how I've, been, I've been running a lot of ventures, projects, strategies over the few years, right? And in this uh, stakeholder management, we also, it's useful for uh, companies, useful for strategy, uh, useful for projects, you know. A anything that you do which involves people, right, you probably need to have at the initial stage think about a little bit about this. So that's a little bit about my experience in this area, right. Uh, and ultimately it's all about people management. Okay. Okay. So I did this very quickly, this workshop lasts about, this whole section lasts about an hour, right, because we do a lot of Workshop, we do flip charts, we do post it notes. They actually come up with a stakeholder management strategy by the end of the workshop. So then they know what to do. Right? After that, it's just execute the meeting. Sanjay, yes. Uh, what about new stakeholders? Mm -hmm. I mean, like for example, right now, you know, in social network, the followers can you know, should also be your stakeholders, right? Yes. So how do you manage those people? Because it is people that you don't really know, you know, and they're just following you, right? Right. So so Mm. Right? Is it right? Or, or 
what what would be the you know if I engage them, uh, yeah. what would be the outcome you know of the engagement for me to classify the person as a state, stakeholder? What because it, it, it's like you know uh, I'm a friend, right? I really don't care too much, but I do engage you, right? right? But I'm probably not a stakeholder. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it, 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 stakeholder definition for me is that everybody's a stakeholder. Anybody around you that affects your business, the five things I say, impact, affected, you know, everything. But the guy is totally out, he's not impacted, affected, nothing. That's not a stakeholder. But the, the five five points I put out there. So I, I, I agree with your point. And one of the things in stakeholder I said, this is not a static document. Yeah. It's not static. Okay. Over a, a three-year project, you can see my stakeholder management changes totally. The people who were there in the, in the beginning disappeared at the end. I don't have to worry about them anymore. So which means that you want to spend the time to make sure, make sure that you are updating this. So as you said, new stakeholders may come on board. Make sure new stakeholders come on board. Old stakeholders may be retired, right? Because they now finance done ready, they can't do anything, you know, the funding is done. They can't do anything, okay, out, put them out. Okay, if that's the case, right? Otherwise, you have to think about, okay, now all these new people are coming. All of a sudden, you go to Facebook and new, new set of people are coming in and talking about your product. Like, how do you engage them? So you need to be able to keep this, keep this live. It's a live document. Yeah. Okay. Actually, recently I went for a workshop and another this thing came up. Was we design a design a project, an IT project. We think of stakeholders as someone that we can face to face. Like followers, you can't face them. Right? So in any IT project, the obvious stakeholder is obviously your your guys, your hackers are going to hack into the system. So you have to account for them. So if you now treat them as stakeholders, because they're going to impact your work. Yes, they're going to impact your You cannot engage hackers. Just imagine hacker, right? Yeah, hacker yeah, is a stakeholder. You don't know where they come from, right? Yeah, yeah. But at least you know they exist and they can impact you. How do you really get the risk and so on? It's a given stakeholder in some way. Yeah. So that's why you have to understand. Because sometimes we, we ignore this. Uh, similarly, like, like the guy who was a snake, I ignored him for the longest time. But he gave me so much trouble, right? That I need to pull him in and say, how do I manage this guy? Even though it was a negative thing, right? Just bring him along for meetings, buy him a drink. You know, it, it was a waste of my time as far as I was concerned. But if I don't do that, right. the guy that remains unsatisfied yeah. and he gives me trouble. Right. So in terms of I was, uh, IT projects, talk about servers, at least you can harden them for them somewhere, right? But now the next thing is IoT. IoT, you can also think about vendors. Your vendors can also impact you. Not just hackers, now your physical code will vandalize sensor and now you use it. So that's the other angle we have to manage. The challenging part of stakeholders. So maybe you need to put it in a locked lock place. But I think, I think that's a good point. Right? Like nowadays your stakeholders can be invisible. Anybody, you don't know can be anybody, are. right? So you cannot discount the fact that there's no stake. I don't have a stakeholder. Because of the fact that the way technology is moving along, the media is moving along. Uh, and, and I think, I think that's, a, that's a very good point. How do I know? How do I engage those people? It's a different strategy. You have to brainstorm and figure out how you engage them. Part of it. 
we hit the part. They don't. They, 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 yeah, they, they tell them think about stakeholders. Yeah. yeah. yeah a, a lot of the uh, I do I've done been doing a lot of project management workshops. You know, uh, a lot of times I ask the I ask the feedback. Right. Most of the projects that, that I've come across, they say they don't do this, mm. and they say that this is the problem. Then at the end of the day, I say, what's the most valuable thing to take back? Take on management. They take back two things in projects: is stakeholder management and risk management. These are the two key things that take back, which they tend to neglect. So in government, we say yes, they don't do that. And but the other question also is that how do you find out? And, and yes, your government is your stakeholders. So regulatory Singapore, we are like that. So they have to be part of stakeholders, whether they are. So in a lot of projects, I do like healthcare and other stuff. Sometimes they put, like say, healthcare, they put MOH as a mistake because regulation becomes a difficult, difficult thing, right? right? So because sometimes regulation they're tied up, they're tied down, but then they have to work within that that regulation. But you're right, they, um, then it, people think it's, it's a waste of time. But I tell them, look, you don't have to sit down and do this chart and that stuff. Once you get the thinking in your mind, yeah. right? Who are the tigers, who are this, who are this? That's all you have to do. So if it's a small project, just, it's a mental it's a mental exercise. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of uh, get together and say, who's going to support us? Right? Yeah. Who's going to resist us? Yeah. Right? It's just that kind of a workshop that you need to do. And just just this people that is how we manage, simply. But if it's the last project, if the last, last projects that I've seen, wow, very extensive. In fact, they go down much more granular than this. This is nothing. There's the four box become nine box. You know, four box becomes a nine box, and then all kinds of things they will do, like different types of strategies and stuff. I think as an investor, right, uh, it is often a mistake if uh, the investor organization don't manage uh, to investor as a stakeholder, yeah. right? Because that, that actually determines you know your your help they're gonna get for a next level investment. So that's actually quite quite critical. So therefore, you know, stakeholder management actually has a different aspect. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I think the terminology is stakeholder management has been taken because very generic. But I think this start exercise is not just taking it's taking everything. Whether you start a new business, whether you start a, you, you implement a new strategy, yeah. right? Whether you run a project, whether you uh, the, this one is very important in change. Right. Nowadays, a lot of things are going to change, and, and it's it's a big struggle for a lot of organizations to to transition, right, to change because the disruptive change is coming. Right, and a lot of companies are just falling behind, falling behind. And why they're falling back? Not that they don't have a plan, right? Is that they're not engaging the people. The people are resistant, right? And the moment people become resistant, right, they become die-hard resistors. Very hard, very hard to change. Culture change, right? The, these are these areas are culture change, change management. Positions, mergers. These are the tough part. Why, why some companies just after so many years of merger and still can't still can't get everyone? Right. Yeah. Okay. So I just people around, be around. We're gonna have yeah. after this, right? So you can still ask me. Just a really quick one. Uh, um, actually, there are a lot of things happening in SCS. Like this, uh, this evening, actually we are screening a free movie, which is Doctor Strange, right? Doctor Strange. If, if you guys check out the website, right? Because there are lots of events out there. Then this Friday there is a there is a interesting gamification uh, course, yeah. right? And in the evening there is a free session on uh, training in HR for gamification. So it's actually quite an interesting uh, thing. Just just go scs.org.sg and check out the, uh, the events. There are just so many events. I mean, I was just told to highlight one or two during because I'm going to do an introduction this evening at the at the at the Doctor Strange, right? So I was told to you know. Tell people that this Saturday there is a business uh, 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 a leadership uh, session, right? But as I as I scroll through it, oh, there's so many things like enterprise architecture, cloud computing, career skills upgrading, uh, certified software testing. Oh, I mean, I can't. You know, there's so so much stuff. So so you guys go and check out the, the website. Uh, um, pizza is here. Oh. Right. <laughs> so like. Thank you very much for coming, right? Uh, see you guys next week. Next week, I have two presentations for a change. Uh, um, the first one would be Kim. Uh, Kim Faulkner runs a uh, branding company. So she's one of the most sought after branding persons uh, 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 in town. Uh, she started a company called Interbrand, sold it, make millions, and now she's helping other people do funny things, right? So, so be here. Next week, she'll be, she'll be uh, uh, speaking. I also got a bunch of students whom I, I, I mentor in SMU. Uh, they came up with a very interesting app called My Mind. 
right? So it's M A I M A I, right? So if you are not Chinese, uh, it's my mind, <laughs> right? So then they, that, I asked him, what is it? They said, oh, it's my mind, my itself, right? So literally, what it is is a C to C, right? Uh, uh, a platform, right? But unlike Carousel, right? They actually extend on Car Carousel and basically complete the payment. Plus, they actually do dispute resolution. Because the biggest problem they told me, right, that when, when some person wants to sell a second hand car, a second hand phone, is that the guy won't turn up, right, either party, right, and then people get very pissed off at that. So there's a whole review, there's a whole dispute resolution. So literally, if uh, uh, you do a down payment, right, and you didn't turn up, because of all these checks, automatically you'll be completed. Right, so quite an interesting. Uh, there, there's still a bunch of students really, really on, right? So they'll be here next uh, week talking about their, their, their software. All right? Guys, Pizza is really, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for dressing up. <laughs>